أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وراودته التي هو في بيتها عن نفسه وغلقت الأبواب وقالت هيت لك قال معاذ الله إنه ربي أحسن مثواي إنه لا يفلح الظالمون رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي فالحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين such a difficult juz to pick something from where actually i had to go back to the 12th juz again and just pick an ayah from surah yusuf um, this is surah yusuf uh, 12th juz and ayah number 23 and in this particular juz or in this particular ayah allah is talking about the temptation i know i'm talking to people on youtube and on facebook in particular so I figured I'd talk about something that young people, you know, face. Temptation. So Allah says, Rawadathu, Allati huwa fi baytiha, the, the wife of the minister. Allah says that she tried to seduce him. And the word Rawada is used, which comes from uh, Ruwaid, which means slowly. Ruwaida in Arabic, Ruwaida, Ruwaida means slowly. So the suggestion is that she tried to reel him in and tried to seduce him, not just one time, but she kept at it. And she kept, you know, trying to get him. Like, you know, come just come over here, it's okay. Wow, you look really handsome today. And like, she drop in a line or two, and he can't get away, because Allah says, Allati huwa fi baytiha, the one in whose house he was. And it, the, 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 just rhetorically just saying baytiha, her house, means she has access to the entire house, he can't get away from her. Everywhere he goes, she's there. And she's slowly, little by little by little, making her advances. And he's a young guy. He just became a teenager, just in the previous ayah, Allah describes him becoming a, coming into manhood. Right? What's also interesting to note is, when the, the man of the house first brought him in, he actually recognized the intelligence of this kid on the road trip, that isn't even mentioned in the Qur'an, on the road trip to the house in Egypt where he stayed, the minister, he realized this kid is special, and he should be treated with respect. A kid that's sold as a slave, how, how does a slave get respect? But the first thing he comes up, he says to his wife is, Akrimi matwahu. You better honor his long-term permanent room. Don't not give him a room, not put him, give him a place to live, get him a bed. No, no, no. Honor, honor his permanent room. Matwa actually means a, stay, a place where you stay for generations. Meaning, I want this kid to be here, I want him settled, I don't want him to leave. He's a real asset. He recognized that, but he also recognized his wife has a problem with dignity. Because <laughs> he didn't just say to her, Give him a room. He said, honor his room. Meaning, don't just walk into his room. Give him his space. I don't want you to just walk, you know, uh, feel like you can go and mess with him anytime you want or talk to him or give him instructions. Even as a kid, he wanted her to keep a distance from him. So he says, akrimi matwahu. Now, what, was he right on the money? Yeah, he was. Because time comes, she's trying to seduce him little by little. She's throwing hints at him as he's becoming a man. And then the other thing that's happening is, Rawada also means, comes from arada, intention. And they say rawada is when you try to make someone have the same intentions you have. So she's trying to get him to think like her. It's not a big deal. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. Don't you feel anything? You know? Don't you think I'm beautiful? Like she'll, she'll say these things like she wants her to think how he thinks. And you know, a young man with the temptations that he has. He's a regular human being. He doesn't say, I, I don't put myself above temptation. He doesn't say that. Even Quran says, bihi wa hamma biha law la arra la rabbihi. He, She desired him. He, he would have desired her too had he not seen the evidence of his master. But the, the point I wanted to make, finally, is when she really desired him, she, you know, an nafsihi, she wanted him to slip from his own intentions. His intentions were he's going to stay pure. He's not going to indulge in this sort of thing. How many young people can we say that with? A beautiful woman is after you. She says there's nothing wrong with it. She says it's fine. She's the one coming for you. you usually men are pursuing the women. The woman is pursuing you. you know. And it's in the privacy of a house. And she's your boss. And she's, you have all the reasons to say, hey, well, it's my boss. She told me to do whatever. So it's, it's okay. Of all the rationalizations are possible, all the doors are locked. She didn't just lock one door, she locked multiple doors, and every door had multiple latches on it. So it's totally private, nobody's going to find out. And then she says, Hayta, like, come over here, and Hayta is used as a seductive word, it's not used normally. Hurry up and get over here. She's, I mean, Allah doesn't even describe how she was. You know, we don't even want to know. But she's throwing herself at him, literally. 
And she's, you know, calling him, Haytalak. And so at that moment, we learned the awesome character of Yusuf. All the guys that are on campus, all the guys that are in high school, all the guys that are at the workplace, all the guys that are just walking by in the mall, you know, all of you guys that, that look, that some girl texts you, that some, you know, she says, you know, you're kind of cute, you want to talk later? Here's my number, or whatever. Like, this man, I mean, there are people, people, you know, young people, they fantasize about this situation. They fantasize about this situation. Yusuf is in this situation. And he can remember that, he, that Allah is watching at this situation. That's the, that's the thing we're being taught here. And he turns to, he says, Ma'ad Allah, I seek the refuge of Allah. I seek a place where I can find Allah's refuge because Ma'ad is considered an ism dharf, a place. I seek a place where I can find Allah's refuge. Innahu Rabbi Ahsana Mathwaya. My master has taken good care of me. Which is on, in, in, uh, he's really provided me good housing, which he's referring to Allah as his master. And she, if she doesn't believe in the master, at least she, when she hears the same word, she might think that Rabb refers to the owner of the house, that he's honored me. So if she clearly doesn't fear God, at least she'll fear her husband. So it's the wisdom of Yusuf السلام, that the words he used could be referring to Allah, which in his case, he may be saying, Allah took care of me. How can I be disloyal to Allah? And she hears my master and she might not even think Allah, she might think he means... Her husband, who's been good to me, if you can't be fearful of God, at least think you have a husband, woman, before you do something like this. You know? إِنَّهُ رَبِّي أَحْسَنَ مَثْوَايَا إِنَّهُ لَا يُفْلِحُ الظَّالِمُونَ Wrongdoers don't, don't prosper. And he's not going to prolong the conversation. فَاسْتَبَقَ الْبَاب So awesome. Allah, وَاسْتَبَقَ الْبَاب You know? When the story continues, the next thing you know, he's not, no, no, lady, you need to calm down, think about this, I'm sorry, I can't. He doesn't, he knows, she's not into the talk. He ran for it. Al Bab. Don't sit there and just talk to talk to the girl and say Astaghfirullah, that's haram, sister. You know, you really should think about what you're saying. No, don't give her advice. You're, you're not giving her advice. You're just spending more time with her. Be honest to yourself. Get away from there. Get away from that conversation. Don't pursue it further. Don't respond back to her. You're in Ramadan, man. Don't respond to her text messages. Don't do it. Make tawbah from it. Don't even say, I won't text you anymore. Don't say it. You know, why aren't you responding to my emails? No, astaghfirullah, it's Ramadan. Don't even respond. Do not engage. The same thing goes for the girls. If you guys want to really take advice from the Quran, this is real stuff. This is not just a story. This is your story. This is what you're up to right now. And if you're, if you're involved in this, and you heard these ayat of Quran, Allah will ask you and me on Judgment Day, these ayat you heard, you think they were just stories? They weren't talking about you? Fihi dhikrukum. It's talking about you, Allah says. And it is your mention. And is it your story? It's advice for you. So don't just read this story and think it has nothing to do with your dating life. It has nothing to do with your little, you know, personal exploits that your parents don't know about, that your friends don't know about. It, it does. It very much does. There's no accident this is mentioned in the Quran. This is a timeless problem. And if you're suffering from it, I pray that, you know, learning from the story of Yusuf السلام, makes you really rethink what you're doing with your life. You're praying, you're fasting, you're trying to read Qur'an, and there's a girlfriend? There shouldn't be. You really need to think you, that this is not a small sin. This is not something small you're doing. You're playing with your own faith. And I pray for you, and I pray that you're strong enough to do the right thing and cut off a halal relationship. And if you cannot cut it off, that you make it halal, that you man up and you make it into a halal relationship. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Qur'an Weekly.